What's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday, August 13th, the morning of the Made by Google event down in Mountain View. I am, of course, up in Petaluma, so I don't live very far from Mountain View, probably about an hour and a half drive this morning. It's about 5.30 a.m., about the time I normally wake up, but, you know, a little slow, a little groggy. Got my coffee, I'm gonna hop in the car, but before I do that, I need to load all the gear and everything for this day because it's gonna be a really big day and you're gonna come along with me. Let's go. Well, I'm now in the car, ready to go. It is about seven o'clock. Got a little less than two hour drive ahead of me to get to Mountain View and uh, uh, see some stuff. So I'm driving to the Made by Google events, just listening to uh, my current favorite artist, Fortet on Spotify. Just kind of thinking about what's coming up here. Very excited to see the new phones. In particular, I'm very interested in the new Pixel Fold 2, <laughs> whatever they're calling it. I know they've uh, been changing the names and they're getting a little complicated at this point, but nonetheless, very excited. Hopefully at some point I can do a full review of the Pixel Fold uh, that's coming out here. And then I really wanna see the Pixel Watch 3 as well. I know there's two sizes now. I was just talking with my wife earlier. She's been using the Pixel Watch 2 and her complaint is that the Pixel Watch 2 is too large. She wishes there was a smaller size coming out for her wrist. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We know there's gonna be a larger one. So I'm super curious to see how the larger one compares, especially because I've got the OnePlus Watch 2 on my wrist. It's a pretty large uh, wearable, so I kind of want to see how that how that goes toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, side by side. And then, yeah, we've got the next iteration of the Pixel Buds. Curious about that. Probably not going to have a lot of ability to demo uh, something that you put into your ears <laughs> at this event. But hey, they may surprise us. Uh, so yeah, got a, about 30 minutes left on the drive. I should get there with plenty of time to get a seat and uh, for the event to get underway. This is the longest drive ever going from Petaluma to Mountain View. I am so happy this is not my everyday commute, but I'm almost there, like seven minutes away. Some of my friends are already at the event and I can't wait to get there and to see everybody and to see what Google has. I know that crazy looking building, that belongs to Google. All right, so I've made my way, I got my press badge. I'm ready to go in, uh, check out the scrum. Let's go. We're obsessed with the idea that AI can make life easier and more productive for people. We want to bring all the improvements of an AI-powered OS to everyone. Take a photo and ask, check my calendar and see if I'm free when she's coming to San Francisco this year. Oh, looks like we had a little demo issue. Let me try one more time. All of our new Pixel 9 phones feature a completely re-engineered, sculpted design. With Pixel 9 Pro Fold, you're getting the best of both worlds. So why don't we add some fireworks? And now I can take a photo and now, if you both come over here, you will see that it is going to be processed in one single shot. Loss of false detection is the kind of innovation that's only possible with continuous, highly accurate sensing. One of the first places you'll see Project Aster come to life will be right in Gemini Live. first got my hands on the Pixel 9. They had everything all set out in a nice orderly fashion. Very colorful. The 9 series actually has some really great colors to it. Obsidian, porcelain, and then wintergreen and peony, which just really jump off the table. They almost feel like uh, they're made of neon or something. A really nice polished glass back and the sides just super shiny, really kind of, kind of slick and metallic. 
but rounded in a way that's really comfortable uh, in the hand. Um, from a design perspective, the Pixel 9 is just an excellent feeling phone. There's nothing cheap about it. It feels like a top tier uh, phone. You know, Google promises 20% longer life when the screen is on with the battery underneath, 25% longer with the screen off. Of course, I'll put that to the test when I have it. Uh, 12 gigs of RAM, Tensor G4 chip as all of the Pixel 9 hardware has. So that's, that's really nice, right? They can all do some of the advanced artificial intelligence uh, tasks that, uh, that they are touting with Gemini on these devices. And some really uh, great camera hardware as well that is shared between the devices in this family. Oh, also a 6.3 inch display, which was incredibly sharp, incredibly colorful. That's the Actua display on this. That actually makes it 35% brighter than the Pixel 8. Right now I have the Pixel 9 Pro XL. So this is the largest of the large, around $1,100. And, you know, once again, I think that that's what's striking to me is the kind of chrome shiny quality around the edges just gives it a really sharp um, feel to it. I mean, this, this thing feels like it's built like a tank and, you know, doesn't have that kind of hollowness that sometimes phones have. Though Pixels, by and large, unless you're getting into the A series, haven't really had that hollowness, thankfully. But, um, wow, this is a really wonderful. You know, you've got your uniform um, camera bump, camera bar, whatever you want to call it. It is now the kind of rounded edges uh, instead of this squarish kind of approach, which is really the difference in the design aesthetic that, the, that Google's going for with this year's uh, iteration. Looking at the display, I mean, this sucker is bright, it's sharp. I mean, it's just beautiful. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of what we've got here and can't wait to give it a spin. Man, I just love how shiny the, the sides are, the design of this is. It's really something. And the uniformity of the bezels as well, looking nice, kind of that curved edge. I mean, every, every single bevel, bezel here is uh, evenly spaced. So there's nothing to kind of trip, trip your eyes up when you're, when you're looking at it. Overall, very interested in the Pro XL. It's the right size for me. And then rounding out the phones, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. This is, you know, this is what <laughs> this is what you get if you've got a lot of money and you don't mind going out on a limb as far as the feature set is concerned, because this is a foldable. Google's been doing great things with foldables. This phone is no different. It's eighteen hundred dollars, not a price increase from last year, so that's a good thing. But it did change some of the notable specs, like the outer display, um, a little bit taller. So, you know, which kind of thins out, narrows things out a little bit, but in my experience, not so much that it's distracting. The interior display kind of squares it out a little bit, which is fine uh, in my short time with it, but it did kind of throw off some of the uh, ways that apps hit that interior screen. Gmail was doing some strange things where it wasn't opening in the side-by-side -side view. It was opening with one, it was basically the phone interface on the tablet screen, unless you flipped it over to the side. That's a little strange. Hopefully that'll get worked out. But they've got some great colors, porcelain, obsidian. Um, actually, those are some pretty standard colors. Nothing very out there compared to the other phones. But um, they're not sacrificing on the cameras. They're not sacrificing on the memory. I mean, I'm really excited to check out and give more time to the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. It really does seem like they're paying attention to the shortcomings of a lot of the other foldables and doubling down on quality. I like that about this. Moving on to the wearables, Google showed off the Pixel Watch 3. And now the big news, of course, this year is that they have two sizes, not just the 41 millimeter that they've had in the past that some people have complained, it's just a little too small. So the 41 millimeter, also 45 millimeter, a little bit larger, a little bit flatter on the top. Uh, still with that actual display, so incredible uh, brightness, 2000 nits of peak brightness is gonna be pretty ample for outdoor uh, viewing. Uh, excellent battery life as well, up to 36 hours if you're in battery saver mode. 
Um, and of course, you know, less than that outside of battery saver mode, but definitely around 24 hours, I'm guessing at least. And I think you know one of the biggest uh, aspects here is really how the hardware and the software kind of co coexist together with the AI on your phone that it's connected to and all the Fitbit um, history and integrations they're really google's really stepping up its game in taking everything that they've learned with fitbit and squishing that into the uh pixel watch 3 and doing some really neat analytics and things that fitness data buffs are going to find a lot that they like about these these devices the 41 millimeter starts at 349 for wi-fi 449 for lte the 45 millimeter 399 Wi-Fi, 499 LTE. And finally, rounding out the hardware from the event, the Pixel Buds Pro 2. Now, I've, I've been a huge fan of the Pixel Buds series, and seeing the upgrades here has me really excited. Inside, it has a new chip, the Tensor A1 chip, which, yes, of course, has something to do with the artificial intelligence, which I'll talk about in a second, but also is about kind of supercharging the onboard noise cancellation. You actually get eight hours of battery life if you have ANC on. 12 hours without and then if you're using ANC you get about 30 total hours with the case rated by Google 48 hours without so that's a lot of distance that you get either with or without that noise cancellation and they've improved the algorithms so things sound better I look forward to testing that out myself as for the design of these buds they're 27 percent smaller 24% lighter. These have always been pretty light. They really kind of, uh, you, you forget that you're wearing them. And that's what I really like about them. They've included a little nub that allows you to twist it into place. Some people complained about these falling out of their ears. I never really had that problem before, but I think this is a welcome addition and uh, look forward to trying that. Excellent colors, of course. Yes, you got your winter green and your peonies that you can color coordinate across the board. Uh, IP64 rated, Bluetooth 5.4, and I alluded to uh, AI. This These buds are really dialed into hands-free Gemini Live interactions. It's not doing that all on this device. It's passing through from the connected phone, but still, nonetheless, I've used hand-free assistant on these for quite a few years now, and that's a great experience, so I'm really looking forward to that. $229 for the new Pixel Buds Pro 2. And now the other part of the event, which really had to do with software. And I mean, Google's doing some really interesting things with software. No surprise, most of it <laughs> leans heavily into the artificial intelligence uh, capabilities that they've been developing. I spoke with Isaac Reynolds, who's the product manager for the Google camera team. He walked me through the process of using the new magic editor tool set on the Pixel 9. He had actually picked a photo that was cropped very strangely and the demo went from there. So this is just a very convenient snapshot. It's one of those ones where you're having a good time, you don't want to be stuck behind the camera, take a quick snap, put it away, and then later you realize you really messed it up. You know? So what you can do with auto frame is we'll go into editor, we'll go to magic editor, we're gonna tap and we're gonna use auto frame right here. Now it's gonna send this up to the cloud and apply some generative AI. Mm -hmm. The first thing is it's gonna do is try and kind of straighten this horizon. Okay. The next thing it'll do is it'll give us, now to do that, it actually has to rotate the picture. And so it's gonna expand those parts that would have otherwise been cropped out. Right. And you make it a wider field of view, respecting things like rule of thirds or golden ratios or centering to give you a really nice sort of framing of this. So that one's a little too far in. Mm -hmm. That one I really like. I'm going to go with that one. And you can see it actually is, it's actually going to reconstruct part of his shoe yeah, as well. Yeah, it's taking a look at a little bit of the patterning of the shoe and trying to, re it's not perfect, but yeah, you know, generative AI, it's often yeah. not perfect. And this stuff gets better yeah, every year. For sure, for right? sure. This is a very active area for development. So next thing we're going to do is, um, <laughs> let's take a look at the sky. I want to say, uh, I sort of wish we were here at sunset. Mm -hmm. So let's give this a shot. Uh, we'll go, let's go, actually I'll choose this one. We're going to tap that and it's going to automatically segment out what it thinks you tapped. Mm -hmm. So in this case I tapped the sky so it's going to select the whole sky. And it sky. carves out the mountains I see. Correct, and it carves him out and his hair as well. Yep, yep. We'll go reimagine and we're just going to say... Throw dragons in there, do dragons. dragons. I want to see right. dragons in the sky. New dragon sunset. It's going to be good fun. I'm looking forward to this. Um, and we'll see what it imagines for us. 
I'm excited. I think it's going to work. Okay, cool. He knows drag. <laughs> so again, it's sending up for Jenna. There we go. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's cool. I love that. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one too. Yeah, I like the the kind of the framing is, around. This him. is very nice. See, it's part of your new demo. <laughs> okay, going forward. It likes symmetry too. You can see some symmetry in here. So I'll choose that one, guy. We've got some uh, dragons in the sky. You want to get creative? You can get creative. Yeah. If you want to be like, you know, I was on vacation. This is my day at the beach. I really didn't want it to be cloudy. Yes. You can say, ah, oh, it was a that's, blue sky. That's the obvious choice. Or you could turn the grass into lava. Oh. You could possibly do that. I'm just saying. That. Reimagine. Just an idea. Lava. Let's see what it gives us. <laughs> Either way, it's always good fun. I think what's really interesting about this to me uh, my, is... Oh, doesn't want to do lava? Oh, it doesn't want to do lava. So let's, do, let's try... Uh, sometimes it depends on what the uh, prompt you actually give it is. Okay. Because it Hot depends magma. on... I like that. Just like there's some inconsistency, or not inconsistent, but some randomness in the output. Sure. There's some randomness sometimes in the input. Too. Sure, sure. So sometimes if you just rephrase what you're asking for, it's a little more willing to do it. Um, and sometimes there's just a lot of people doing stuff. But today it doesn't love it for yeah, some reason. Okay. Um, you, it doesn't have to be burning floor. It can it can be it, something that isn't quite as it, lethal. It may That's not fine. like that. It may yeah, not, it may like, not that. like the the lethal nature of it. I think what's interesting about this though does it, this does require the um, the premium Gemini in order to do these this processing, right? No. When you buy this a Pixel, you have access to Magic Editor right there on your phone without any additional subscription. Okay, that was a question that I had because I mean, so many of you know the services out there require yeah. you to pay at a certain point like they're free up until a certain point this unlimited amount of redos and, and generations and you're good to go it's, it's all happening on device yeah the same is true for video boost as well mm. um, amazing you know all the things you're seeing here are launching on the devices on launch day yeah another big AI driven feature with the camera was the add me feature set and I actually got a quick demo and enlisted my buddy from Android Faithful to join me for this demo, Ron Richards. I think he enjoyed it. You don't want in? So I'll switch to add me mode. I'll leave room for the photographer over there. So I'll frame it just right, take the first shot. The camera captures the position, the existing subjects. Now the photographer can step in, swap in with Maya. And we capture the second shot with the framing guidance. And cameras. Processing the image. And while wow, it's processing, the, the it one that's stepped that. out is out. And then, boom, they're oh, both yeah. in there. Everyone's in there. And is it a straight, like, stitching? Or is AI, like... No, there's 15 models running on device. You do the segmentation, the stitching, shadow extraction, and all that. Yeah, and we can switch between the... Yeah. The first, the second, sorry, the second. And the there we yeah. go. Right on. And then we have pixel screenshots. Now, I promise you, this is more <laughs> exciting than it might sound like. I spoke with Ethan Graybow, who is one of the product managers uh, for the Pixel Screenshots app, who gave me a walkthrough as far as what this is all about and why you should care about it. All right, Ethan. So you've been working on the Pixel Screenshots app, and uh, I think it, it's probably easy for someone to see this and be like, oh, screenshots, okay. Yeah. But I actually think there's something to what you guys are creating here, because I can think of a million times when I take a screenshot because I, I don't want to forget something. Yes. And then it's lost. Like, it's just kind of gone. It's like junk. Yeah. But this empowers it to be something more than, than junk. It, right. it turns right. it into an indexable searchable, really kind of cool source of information. So show off, show a little bit about the power of, uh, of your app here. Absolutely. You're, you're exactly right. Most people screenshot very frequently. So if I'll take a screenshot here, you see this new AI animation that shows that this screenshot is now being processed with Gemini Nano with multimodality right on the device. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need to go to a server. It happens right here. And if you want, you could set a reminder. You know, maybe I want to buy this as a gift for my wife's birthday that's upcoming. Now I can open up the screenshots app and I can see all of the screenshots that I've saved, kind of a beautifully curated app. I can see my reminders up here, including the one that I just made. And let's say I wanna come in here and add some more details, like Melissa birthday idea, because maybe this is something I wanna get for her birthday. And then I can add it to a gifts collection. And then when I want to search later, like Melissa's birthday, that comes right to the top. What's also cool is that we're taking more than the screenshot when the screenshot's grabbed. We grab the deep link if it's available. So for example, we took this in a Chrome web page. I can now click this and go right back 
to that same website I that I took that. the screenshot. I in. love the linking to it because often, you know, when you're taking a screenshot, like I'm not thinking twice about where it came from. I'm just like the information on here, but then you want to go back to it. That's it right. Be kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, absolutely. I can show you a few more things on this. Sure. Um, you can search for something. So t-shirt and find real fast results, but maybe I want to find out the price of the t-shirt without having to go into the images. I can just ask, ask the question, get a generated answer right here. It costs $39. And then I can again go and, and purchase the shirt. Mm -hmm. Or you might want to use it for a code. So I frequently will take screenshots of discount codes that I want to use. So I'll, I'll just do this with the microphone. What's the discount code for the Chelsea boots? Again, another gift idea for my wife. There's the discount code right there. I can copy and paste it. Again, this is using Gemini Nano right on device. I'll show one last one here, which yeah. is this flan recipe shows how the multimodality of the model is able to understand not only this bit of text here, but the image as well, including this handwritten note. So I could ask a question like, how many eggs? Sorry. Oh, there it is. I got it. <laughs> it's like I got you. That's the only one I had eggs. That's incredible. Yeah. So it pulls out the three eggs from this very small handwritten note. Now you see it, three large eggs right there. Man, and so not only is it doing OCR like to, to understand the words that are in that shop, but that wasn't like typewritten, you know, That's that right. was not a font, that was a scribbled handwriting, and it's still able to pull that back and make that indexable. That's exactly right. And I, I maybe one, one additional I'll show you. When is the Forest Folk concert? So I have a screenshot of this Forest Folk, Folk Fest. So again, it's not a concert, but it understands Okay, that's likely what this is. Right. And it shows me the date, it's on October 26th, which is right. But then I might wanna ask, when do the tickets go on sale for the Forest Folk Fest? And it's a different answer because on this screenshot, there's actually two dates. And the model's able to understand the difference, even though it's not explicitly listed that this is the event date and this is the ticket sales, mm -hmm. it has that semantic understanding. So when I ask those two questions, it can reason about it. And then I can even add this to my calendar. So it recognizes that there's a date here. I might want to add that to my calendar and it takes the details and enters it right away so I can save that quickly. Love it. Thank you so much. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I've noticed, oh, it, it just got wacky. Uh, it does that a lot. One of the things that really struck me uh, in the announcement when this was on stage is that this really feels like, and I, I think I mentioned to this to you earlier, it's kind of like a personalized Pinterest. Right. You know, right. It, it takes something that might be seen as, um, you know, something that 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 has an expiration date or it's disposable. Disposable right. is the word I'm looking for. And turns it into something that's rich, valuable data yeah. so that on the fly I can say, oh, this thing, that's perfect for my wife's birthday or whatever. Right. Throw it into the bucket, move on with life, and then it's there to pick from. That's later. exactly it. We really wanted to meet people where they're at rather than trying to get a new behavior from, yeah. from people. So yeah, fair. you're taking screenshots right now. We would just want to make that process real seamless for you. Right on. Ethan, thank you so much thank for showing you. me. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. The AI features don't just limit themselves to the phones specifically. It also extends to the Pixel Watch 3. Yeah, so uh, this year we have some big updates that help you balance your activity with recovery. And that starts with big updates to readiness, cardio load and a new personalized target called target load and then that all comes together in a morning brief delivered each day so heading over to morning brief automatically on your wrist each morning you'll get this proactive brief that greets you with a nice good morning message and it gives you an insight that helps you plan your day after this insight it shows you your readiness score your readiness is based on your heart rate variability your resting heart rate and your sleep uh, and it gives you your target load telling you just how much to take on for the day shows you how you slept, shows how you're tracking towards your weekly exercise goal, and it shows the weather so you know if you need to bring an umbrella or if you can bring your running shoes. Now, when it comes to readiness, there are two big updates. One, readiness is now available for all users, not just Fitbit Premium subscribers. And so it's important because we want recovery to be key to everybody, not just to people who subscribe. Um, and then uh, the other big update, it's got an all new algorithm. The algorithm uses your resting heart rate, heart rate variability, and sleep, and is more tuned to your body's biometrics, better reflecting your state of recovery. 
Now, to track your training each day, we introduce cardio load. It measures your heart's exertion throughout the day, and it shows you based on your trends if you're overtraining, undertraining, or improving your fitness. The last piece is that based on your recent cardio load and your readiness score, you'll get a personalized target each day, which is your target load. And that tells you exactly how much to take on so that you can improve your fitness while preventing injury and prioritizing recovery. So that's the big set of updates in recovery and activity on Pixel Watch 3. Right on. And how does that surface kind of on the in the watch form factor? Is this kind of something that, you know, appears as like a little notification, like, hey, take a look at this today. We've, we've yeah. put together this information exactly. for you, or is it something that you seek out? I guess you could probably do that regardless, but yeah. Each how does that appear? After you wake up, the Pixel Watch automatically detects when you wake, and it delivers the morning brief very quickly mm -hmm. after you get out of bed. Um, and so it just sends a notification, and there's an indicator on the watch face letting you know your morning brief is ready for you. Of course, you can also access all these features from the Fitbit mobile app, and you can even see them on your wrist. So if I swipe right over here, I can see my readiness and my cardio load and how I'm tracking. So I haven't yet hit my target load up here. Um, I'm down here in my cardio load, and it'll progress throughout the day, especially when I go on my evening run. Mm -hmm. Right on. And you've got the large size watch there, I can yeah, see. Yeah, this is the new 45 millimeter size. It's beautiful. It comes in this new matte hazel aluminum case. It has a 40% larger screen than before. Uh, it has 35% bigger battery, 16% smaller bezels, and it's twice as bright as ever before. Um, so a lot of big updates on the Pixel Watch 3 designed for performance in this beautiful larger size. I think one thing that's striking to me, because I'm very used to the smaller form factor of this watch from yeah. previous uh, iterations, is even though it's larger, there's almost, there's like a, a more of a flatness to it. Almost like the other ones, like it, it still has its rounded qualities mm -hmm. around the edge, mm -hmm. but the other ones feel a little bit kind of deeper yeah. than this one. This one sits really flat and flush to the wrist was my, what yeah, I Yeah, the, the design team did an incredible job thoughtfully crafting the 3D cover glass mm. to fit the wrist in a way that um, is comfortable and it's also discreet. So it really fits with you and your routine. Yeah. Uh, and then it also reduces the size of the bezels by 16% so you can get more display. Mm -hmm. So you can see more on the go. Right on. Yeah, so it keeps going into a lock screen. That's there. okay. It's not on your wrist. Okay. It's, it's freaking out. Yeah, it's freaking it out. It doesn't know what to do. A wristwatch is meant for your wrist, yes. after all. Thank it, you very much for showing yeah, me this. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Uh, did you want to see anything in the running world? Oh, you know what? Yes, let's, let's see that. That's okay. right. Yes. That's great. Absolutely. Okay. Then now this technology uh, update is really about... See, I'm not, I'm not a huge runner necessarily, yeah. but I know that people who are, they do a lot of planning of their routes, they do a lot of planning of kind of their zones, yeah. that sort of stuff. Tell me a little bit about this. Yeah, when it comes to a running experience, you don't just want something that tracks your runs, you want something that helps you plan your run, it guides you with real-time guidance during your run, and then it helps you improve your performance, including improving your form. Uh, and so we're delivering experience across each of those pillars. Um, and it all starts with a new workout builder. So when I open the Fitbit app, I can just tap to start building a run. I can add warm ups and cool downs and I can add intervals. I can set a running interval with a goal for distance, time, time trial, energy burned. And so I can start a run for, let's say one minute and I can set a target of my heart rate zone being in the vigorous zone. And I can just add that to the run. Now we make it super easy to add repeats and create interval workouts. So just by saying repeat four times and add a one minute rest in between, I just built an interval workout that I can click save and start on watch. And just like that, it'll begin the run right on my wrists. And I'm good to go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, That looks great. Totally. Now, uh, let's head off onto our run. So if I open the exercise app and I'll open a demo run that's uh, easy to show the experience, you're getting that real time guidance. So here it's gonna guide me right into my 12 second warm up. This is an accelerated version so you can mm -hmm. see it at a glance, but I don't need to read the metrics. I can just see a progress bar progressing until the end of my warm up when it automatically progresses me into my run. And now, do you get a little uh, vibration, little uh, You get haptic an audio kick. and haptic cues and you can okay. see I set a vigorous zone, but I'm down in the light zone. So you'll get that same audio 
Yeah, so it's telling you you're below the vigorous zone and telling you to pick it up. And if when you're I connected via Bluetooth, you hear that through exactly, your Bluetooth headphone. Exactly. Yeah. And I can always see I'm at run one of five, but I can move on to my next interval just by clicking next. And this shows you that interval run experience. An eight second sprint, very quick, I'm going. And at the end, eight second rest, you're getting uh, this like running coaching experience, like a running buddy tapping you on the shoulder, letting you know what's next, when to pick up the pace, when to slow down, when your heart rate's too high, when your heart rate's too low. So it's very engaging and guided is the idea. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. So this is the last eight second rest and then the workout's over. And that's it. That's it. Now you can, now you can uh, kick back, relax, and yeah. analyze your data. Exactly. So or actually, okay, so now we've got all that data on the device. Yeah. I know now there's kind of analysis capabilities, Absolutely. right? Summarize, all that kind of stuff exactly. to show off a little bit of that. So if we you can dig right in. And this all happens in the new run dashboard in the Fitbit mobile app. So in the run dashboard, I can see how my weekly mileage is progressing over the course of the week, month, three months, years. I can see how my pace is improving over time, even at that year level view. I can see my personal records, like my fastest mile or my furthest oh, that's run. Neat. People yeah. love to gamify that stuff. Exactly. So, yeah, that's great. And you can dig in. So if I go on uh, the last run that I did, let's see, we can open up that last run. It was before launch. Uh, and I can just scroll into that run and I can see all the details. I can see the workout I completed. I can see percent of time I spent in my target heart rate zone. And I can see my form. So it shows me my stride length, my step cadence, my ground contact time. All of this is measured using advanced motion sensing and machine learning. And it's not just giving you data, it's helping you understand the data by showing it compared to your personal ranges. So here mm. you can see my vertical ratio has been high, meaning I'm putting more energy into going up and down than going forwards. And so I've been working to improve that. And you can see the black dot is well below my personal range showing my improvement over time. And you can even dig in more and view the charts to analyze your performance over the course of your run. So you can see your cadence and how it changes during different intervals. I can click to compare and see how my heart rate relates to my step cadence and just see those two side by side to see my heart rate was high, my cadence was high. Or I can go down to when my heart rate was low and my cadence was low. Um, so super easy to reflect on that right from the Fitbit run dashboard. Right on, I love that. that and that's really drawing on the uh, the some of the strengths of AI. You know, AI can do a lot of things, yeah. Sometimes some things better than others, yeah. but really taking all of these multiple points of data and uh, attempting to summarize it and make, and hopefully put it into an organized method that makes sense to the yeah. person on the other side. I think that's a real big strength. Yeah, and speaking of AI, AI can help do the legwork for you. So if I head to the coach tab, if I'm using Fitbit Premium, I get a daily run recommendation powered by AI. So today I have a tempo run, which is great, but I want to understand why I have that tempo run. And it shows me you've been running consistently in the moderate zone, which is great for building your aerobic base. Today, let's pick up the pace with a tempo run. So right there you can see it's analyzing my past runs, understanding I've been taking it easier, I'm in the moderate zone, and it's building a tempo run specifically for me to up the pace. And it has runs that are going to build up to higher and higher heart rates than I usually run, pushing me to do more to improve my fitness. And that's all tailored to help me hit my target load for the day. So it's using AI, tailored to your run history, tailored to help you hit your target load based on your recovery so that you have the perfect run for you on wrists each day. Right on. Nice. Yeah. Excellent demo. Thank awesome. you for showing me all Cheers. that stuff. Appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. My pleasure. <laughs> right on. And 1% battery nice. left. I was like, oh, oh God, are we going to get there? Are we going to get there? It literally oh, just stopped. Amazing. And finally, a device that wasn't actually announced at the event, but I was still very happy to find it here because it totally could have been. Uh, but for some reason, Google chose to announce it a week before the Made by Google event instead. Here, I spoke with Christina Cow. She's the product lead for Chromecasts and Google streaming devices about their new streaming device, the Google TV Streamer. This is the Google TV Streamer, our new streaming device. Um, and it's the fastest streaming device we launched to date. Um, so let me show you really quickly on... So first of all, you would notice that the UI is really smooth. Um, it's minimal stutterness, mm -hmm. as you can see, right? It's very smooth. You barely can see any frame drop. Oh man, I have the NVIDIA Shield, which yep. has been amazing for, a for a very long time. Yep. But it is showing its age. It is not this smooth. 
It is very smooth. Um, why is that? We double the memory, right? And yeah. also it's a faster SOC. Uh, on storage, as you can see, we have a lot of apps here uh, pre-installed, but you can always do more, right? Like uh, because we have 32 gigabytes um, storage, it allows you to download any apps, uh, movies, or games you want. Um, what's really cool about this is it's not just a streaming device, it's also a powerful smart home hub. So it's a matter hub. Um, what do we mean by that? It can connect your matter thread devices to your Google TV. Um, so basically, you know, you will have all the smart home device showing up on the top panel and you can control directly from your Google TV streamer. Let's see, um, well, we have a beautiful lamp right next to the plant. So we call it plant, plant lamp and we can turn it on and off instantaneously. Um, as you can see, the response is really fast again. Mm -hmm. um, what else you can do, if someone is your front door, right, you can check out who's there and you can click into that um, and you can see what's going on in your front door. Um, one of the scenario I like to give is imagine you have a smart lock that connected to your Google TV streamer and you see, for example, your friend is your front door. You can, you know, unlock the door for your friend at your couch without leaving and open a door actually. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really cool. Can you stash or star, uh, sorry, uh, store kind of like combinations of things? Uh, to happen in sequence, like, okay, I'm about to start a movie, dim the lights. You can, you can set up the volume up to that. blah, blah, blah. And you, and you would just do that in the app and then that would reflect inside yeah. of Google TV. You can, you can set up a routine and say, you can say, hey, yeah. good morning, right? And then um, you would set up the sequence, for example, briefing the news, right? Or turning right. on something. And so you can set up as well. So would, that, would that arrive in that particular part of the interface as like a, a button potentially to be pressed if you're already kind of over where, yeah, in there. So if you have your TV on, you can trigger your routine, yes, you will be able to see that. You'll be able to You'll see You'll be able to see okay. the actions on TV. Um, but right now, this interface is just an interface, so you don't really set up your routine right. here. Yeah, but if that makes you, sense. you know, if you trigger something, you'll be able to see, you know, a table lamp on and off if you sure. trigger a routine. Okay. Um, so what else can I show you is um, the AI feature. So it also comes with a really interesting AI feature. Um, so let me show you one of the things I really like to do. Um, how about House of the Dragon? So basically with this, um, this is a Gemini feature. So pretty much it will tell you um, what it's about. You can see the plots and also you can check out what universe, right? If it's, um, let's say, you know, um, Avenger. Kind of part of the, the canon or, yeah, or whatever exactly. the series that you're watching. And none of this is pre-generated. This is all happening on this the This is our demo. So this is all live demo. We can do another one. Let's see. Yeah, here. so every time you go here, though, you're going to see something a little bit different. Well, Is that right? No, so, no, I don't think so. So pretty much um, every time, if it's generated summary, it's going to be the same. So it's based on what is movie about, what is the TV series about. So we try to give um, the accurate uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. message consistently, essentially. Got but it. there's more, if you want to be creative, there's other things you can play with AI. Mm -hmm. Let's say um, another feature, which is really cool, is using AI to generate a screensaver. So oh, yeah. let me just show that quickly. So mm -hmm. press the home button and you can go to the panel of control. Um, then you can open a screensaver. We have one already, but you can change that. You can set up your Google photo. Like if you connect your Google photo yep. to this device, you can show that as your screensaver. On top of that, there's a pre-selected art gallery, but like we also give you options to be really creative. Um, what else we want to generate? Uh, let's Dragons. see. Okay, let's that see. seems to be the thing that I'm having generated AI generate a lot of. Okay, we let's try um, dragons from a castle. Yeah, there we go. Oh, maybe not so much about uh, Gen AI. Let's try another one, see if that works or not. Yeah, so the, the, um, the wallpaper generative feature is that wide open or is it predetermined kind of? Um, it is. It is pieces. wide open, but we do have uh, some filters, um, yeah, just okay. in case you know dragon yep. may scare kids. So that might oh, be. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe we try something more PG. <laughs> um, how about? Uh, let's see. 
uh, worn out boots with a squirrel peeking out. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's like it's it's seeing it as a search and not a, let's see. a generative AI command or something. Let's do that again. Describe my idea. Okay, now let's give it a go. Um, oh, I see. A pair of origami birds soaring over a sky. There we go. Okay, let's now give it a try. Now that's entering that into the real yeah. place. Yeah, I see. Generating. It's coming. So as you can see, um, so pretty much it gives you an idea, and then there's a lot of options uh, yeah. with that. That looks great. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. I think you've done that uh, that prompt before. I think I, I did that before. <laughs> so let's do another one and see if that. No, works. no, no. I'm, I'm just I'm just joking. Like yeah. I know you you've probably done it a million times um, today. Let's try this that. New year. I'm just curious. I'm actually curious to see if um, describe my idea. So I'm going to let's say if see dragon actually works. Mm -hmm. A dragon from a castle. See that. Oh, I have a good feeling about this. Generally. My dreams might be realized. Oh my yes. god, isn't that crazy? Oh, that looks great. Cool. Um, That's really well done. Yeah. My goodness, and to see it in such a large scale, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can uh, get really, really cool. creative. Yeah. Oh, very neat. Yeah. I love it. And then um, finally, the AI that's happening here, that's sending to the cloud. That's not happening on device. It's correct? not happening on device. It's a cloud generated. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. One more thing. Find my thing, remote, uh, find my room, which is my personal favorite feature because mm -hmm. I tend to play things in random places and yeah, can't find too. it. So let's say, you know, um, it disappears somewhere in the couch. I don't know where it is. How do I find it? So there's a button uh, in the back of it, as you can see here. Just okay. press it like five seconds. You will trigger my memory. Oh, and it's blinking. You okay. press any button. I kind of wind down. You know, I've spent a lot of time at the different booths here, talk to a lot of people, have my hand on all the devices, I'm really looking forward to spending time, some solid reviews time with these devices, but it really seems like the big message here, no surprise, artificial intelligence, Google is, you know, this is a muscle that they're really used to flexing at this point. And it's obvious that they're really leaning into Gemini as being the next major phase. If, if Assistant brought us, you know, seven years, however long Assistant has been around, Gemini is, you know, Gemini is going to take us the next seven years, let's say. I don't know, you know, exactly how long, but it's obvious that Google's going to continue to iterate. And I think one thing that this year has really shown me is that they're, they're starting to move out of the idea that AI is, you know, this thing that does a bunch of neat things that makes you go, oh, that's that's interesting. But rather, they're really kind of focusing more on features that fill in the gaps for people who need little pieces of improvement, you know, in their lives. Like the screenshots app is really easy to dismiss, right? Because it's just screenshots, who cares? But what I find interesting is it's taking something that would otherwise be pretty disposable and empowering you with it. It's taking all that information that mattered when you took the screenshot and it's making it accessible. It's organizing it, it's summarizing it for you. Um, it, it puts it to work essentially for you. Um, the call notes, you know, when you're on a phone call, God, how many times have I been on a phone call and I hang up and I'm like, man, I wish I had recorded that or, or whatever. I try and take notes, but I can't keep up quite as fast as they're talking. Like call notes would have saved me. Some of these things are really going to take, you know, how we use our smartphones and um, take it to the next level. And I'm guessing, you know, they continue to deliver on the promises that um, that have been made in the past with things like assistance. So, so I'm super excited. Uh, Want to get my hands on more of the hardware to do some long-term tests. I've also talked to some really cool um, executives here who are running some of these teams uh, behind the technology that was announced here. 
many of them are very interested in coming on and telling the story behind the product. And that sort of stuff gets me really excited. Huge thank you to Google for inviting me to Mountain View for this event. Uh, it was just a ton of fun. And as tired as I was at this point, my day <laughs> wasn't even done. I hopped in my car with all my gear and I joined up with the Android Faithful team to record the week's episode from a random office in the area. And that was just a ton of fun. And then headed over to the hotel where Michael Fisher, AKA Mr. Mobile was staying to interview him for an upcoming episode of the text floater podcast. Do make sure that you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss that amazing conversation that's happening uh, in the coming weeks. Needless to say, by the end of all of that production, <laughs> I was exhausted. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I just finished the uh, text floater interview with Michael Fisher, aka Mr. Mobile. Uh, get back in the car and I realize I got a little alfalfa sprout. <laughs> the top of my head so during that interview i wouldn't be surprised if that little bugger is pointing up throughout the entire interview so who knows maybe i can use gemini to remove that from the footage um highly doubt it i am exhausted it is 7 38 p.m i still have to drive home which is about two hours away and publish android faithful tonight before I go to bed <laughs> and then wake up tomorrow morning and do it all over again because I've got AI inside and a few other things uh, to do. So needless to say, I am exhausted. Had a wonderful day here though. Um, I wouldn't change a single bit of it except for the fact that I haven't eaten any food. So I'm going to eat some food and I'm going to drive home and I'm going to do all the things that I need to do so that I can go to sleep and wake up and do it all over again. <laughs>